Welcome to Ethiopia Today. We will cover the following topics in our today's presentation. Council urges international community, media to condemn TPLF's inhuman acts. The terrorist group TPLF committed an immeasurable inhuman atrocities and sexual assaults in the areas they occupied. Despite ongoing challenges, Ethiopia's economy grows. The details are as follow and invite you to tune until the end to get everything what we have brought into this video. Ethiopian Civil Society Organizations Council ISOC urged international community and mainstream media to reconsider their position and denounce the terrorist TPLF horrific acts against the sovereignty of Ethiopia and innocent civilians. The council stated that since the war started, the international community has been taking wrong stance and measures that did not rationally take account of the realities which have already put the country and the lives of its people at stake, the Ethiopian Herald reported. Unnecessary sanctions and embargoes have been directed on Ethiopia with the very aim of pressurizing the government to stop the war and settle the dispute through negotiations, while no visible effort is seen to have been made to exert same pressure on all the conflicting parties. However the impositions have not brought desired result rather it threw our ordinary citizens into ditches and made their lives horrific. Council has called the international communities and countries to come one step forward to really understand the reality on the ground and refrain from taking unnecessary measures to jeopardize the lives of millions of Ethiopians. Since the very day the war started, some have presented fake news, misleading information with the aim of damaging personalities, distorting facts and spoiling Ethiopia's image. Accordingly the Council has denounced international community and some local media which have been providing false information regarding Ethiopia's northern conflict. The Council has been taking steps to save Ethiopia from the danger it is facing and denounce those who stand against the sovereignty of the country and well-being of its people. As a result of this war, lack of peace, instability, displacement of myriads of women and men including children and the elderly have been observed in the different places in Ethiopia. Besides, conflicting parties have the responsibility to observe minimum standards from the humanitarian as well as human rights perspectives, destruction of infrastructures, like communication networks, water and electric systems, transportation systems, education facilities, health systems, as well as livelihoods and atrocities committed on civilians revealed in recent reports from the Amhara and Afar states are not acceptable by any standards according to Ethiopian Civil Society Organization's Council ISOC. The terrorist group TPLF committed an immeasurable inhuman atrocities and sexual assaults in the areas they occupied. Terrorist thugs committed immeasurable atrocities in Hike town of South Wallow. The TPLF has committed horrific atrocities against resident of Hike town of Amhara state at the time it controlled the areas, town survivors and eyewitnesses said. According to the report on EPA, eyewitnesses said that the terrorist group gang raped Zahara Mohammed resident of the town and she has been exposed to a chronic mental disorder. The informants said that when her son cried, they butted him and they defecated on trays after being fed and words become scarce to express the behavior of the group they have no human element, indeed as they have never had class as human beings. The town administration house speaker Kopvi Zeit said that her family members are among the people suffered from the atrocities of the group. She said that she lost her four family members and the other two member of her relatives as they are attacked by the terrorist group. She stressed that in addition to her family, the group massacred dozens of residents of the town as a revenge. As to the speaker, after the group killed a number of civilians, it had prevented the family of the deceased to undertake burial ceremony as per community's culture, and they are violating the consciences of the local community in particular and that of Ethiopians in general the speaker explained. On another account, Various harrowing and shocking sexual assaults have been perpetrated by the TPLF terrorist group and such inhumane acts are being carried out as a weapon of war against targeted communities as Asfaut Sega psychologist and lecturer at Selleli University. Recently a member of the terrorist TPLF fighters raped 85-year-old nun in the town of Shoa Robert, North Shoa zone of the Amhara state. Following this heartbreaking incident, 
The nun has now started tying a black headscarf on her hair, throwing away her habitual headdress that was symbol of her nunhood and purity. Regarding the aforesaid matter and other related issues, the psychologist told the Ethiopian Herald that the main objective of the sexual violence that has been conducted by the terrorist TPLF group is to dehumanize the section of society in which the attack took place. He added that these assaults that deviate from Ethiopians' religion and culture have been done to entrench a feeling of inferiority among the targeted society. According to him, disgusting sexual assaults have been reported on several occasions in the area particularly during war. Most of the time, the most common victims of sexual violence are women between the ages of 12 and 34 and the main purpose of this assault is considered to be sexual gratification. However he explained what makes the sexual violence committed by the terrorist TPLF group in Ethiopia unique is that the main purpose of the violence is not to satisfy sexual desire but to inflict psychological harms on the targeted society. The psychologist further noted that women who have been raped suffer physical, psychological and social harms. Victims can be exposed to unwanted pregnancies and sexual transmitted diseases. Victims of the sexual assault are often overwhelmed by fear and despair and they may feel that life is not worth living and may decide to commit suicide as Asfau added. Victims need psychological, economical, and medical support to recover based on their suffering, he indicated. He also explained that international human rights organizations have been strongly condemning sexual violence in other countries. However they have chosen to remain silent on the sexual violence perpetrated by the terrorist TPLF group. Although it takes time to investigate and all stakeholders need to do their part to bring the perpetrators to justice, Asfau urged. It is to be recalled that an elderly woman over the age of 50 committed suicide after being gang-raped by the terrorist TPLF fighters in the town of Shoah Robert. Finally, despite ongoing challenges, Ethiopia's economy grows. The ongoing macroeconomic reforms have brought promising results in improving tax collection and boosting government's revenue thereby sustaining the economic progress even if the country is challenged by the ongoing war against terrorism according to the government communication service GCS, as we learned from Ina. In her recent press briefing, GCS State Minister Salamawit Kassa stated that the total amount of money collected from tax in the first quarter of the current Ethiopian fiscal year has shown a 10.8% increment from the past year same period. The government's revenue also exceeded the past year's performance by 22.7%. The state minister further indicated that Ethiopia's export performance is not significantly harmed by the conflict and the country secured over 972 million US dollars during the last three months of the current budget year. Whilst coffee kept its dominance in foreign currency earnings and generated 329 million US dollars in the reported period the performance surpassed that of the past year by 63.1%. Meanwhile, the government has been working tirelessly to expand exportable agricultural commodities including vegetables with a view to boosting the foreign currency earnings. Viable fiscal policies are also put in a place to revive the war-affected economy, Salamawit remarked. Thanks so much our viewers, don't forget to like, and share. And also subscribe to our channel if this is your first time. Let's do our part in disseminating the messages to many people as much as possible and by doing so, you are fighting for Ethiopia and also inspiring us to continue producing these and similar news. May God bless Ethiopia and its people. Many thanks.